Welcome back to Betcha Ballistics and to this new episode on the series related to forensics. Today we're going to talk about bullet fingerprinting, the set of techniques used to try to identify which gun a particular bullet came from. You will soon discover that there's no need for any fancy equipment, your eyes and a little bit of experience will do the trick. Let's get started. First off, today we're talking about macroscopic bullet fingerprinting, which regards signs that are visible to the naked eye. In the following video, if you're interested, I will talk about microscopic fingerprinting. As you probably already know, I like to be very practical, so let's start with an example, and not just a random one, but the first murder case I ever worked on. Long story short, they found a dead body, and the coroner extracted from the abdomen of the subject a bullet exactly identical to this one, and they asked a much skinnier version of me. We need to know as much as possible regarding the gun who fired this. First of all, I need to clarify that in science, and in forensics in particular, certainty doesn't exist, and each of our results has a different level of confidence that has to be specified. So, we will start from the most obvious aspects, and then proceed to the details. In doing so, we will narrow the range of candidate guns. The first aspect we check is the groove diameter. It measures about 355 inches and the bullet is not excessively deformed, so we know for sure the gun was about 9mm. Next step is the bullet shape. As you can see, this is a hollow basewood cutter. Their use is almost exclusively limited to revolver cartridges as they would jam a self-loading weapon, so we're looking for a revolver caliber that is near 9mm, which leaves us with only two possible calibers, the 38 Special or the 357 Magnum. There could be other obscure or obsolete calibers like the 357 Maximum, but they are extremely unlikely to be used in a criminal act for various reasons, so at least during this phase they are neglected. Knowing the maker of the bullet might also be useful, which in this case was found to be Fiocchio Vitali. The identification was easy in this case because of the distinctive bullet features. So for now, we know this bullet came from a 38 or 357 revolver. But until now, we haven't even looked at the rifling, which is going to give us a whole lot of information, which can be used to exclude some gun manufacturers. Overall, there are five parameters. First, you have the rifling type. In this case, it is traditional, which means that the grooves have been simply cut in the bore of the gun. Other possibilities include semi-polygonal like locks, of which I'm holding a bullet, and the less common ones like multi-radials, polygonals, etc. Second, you have the direction, left hand or right hand. If from the shooter they appear turning clockwise, they are right hand, like in our case, so we can exclude all the left hand twist guns, most notably all cold pistols. Here you can see two 45 bullets with opposite direction. Third, number of riflings. It's simply the number of grooves left on the bullet by the barrel. In our case they are five, and numbers from four to eight are common. As a side note, there is a rather famous gun employing only two riflings. Guess it in the comments. The fourth parameter is the groove thickness. It is measured using a micrometer or with optical measurement on the recovered bullet, and in this case the thickness was about 3.15mm. If you look closely though, you will see that my micrometer is giving a different reading. That's because it's screwed up as usual, I'll explain it later. There is also a fifth parameter, which is the twist rate, but its measure is very unreliable on a fired bullet, so we won't perform it. Now let's recap. In our murder case, we were looking for a 38 or 357 chambered revolver with right hand traditional rifling, 5 riflings, and a groove thickness of about 3.15mm. At this point, we can simply look into a database to search for a match with some particular manufacturers. In my case, the only interesting match was with Smith & Wesson. The only other plausible manufacturer was Ruger, but the groove thickness is slightly smaller at about 3mm. And now you can guess what I did wrong before. The bullet I was measuring is one of those I shot out of my Ruger GP100, which has an identical rifling except for the smaller groove thickness. I haven't got a clue where I put the Smith & Wesson ones. Anyway, if you want to try doing this kind of stuff by yourself, you can definitely do it with very little expense. In fact, if somebody in the field tells you that you need fancy and expensive equipment to do gun fingerprinting, that means you probably already know more than them, and they are trying to hide their lack of knowledge with their price tag of their equipment. You can set up a practical bullet catcher for less than 50 bucks. Just use a hay bale of appropriate size as a bullet decelerator, backed by a box full of clay to act as a catcher. If you were to shoot directly into the clay, the faster bullets would get damaged. At very high velocities, mechanics can be quite counterintuitive, as density counts more than mechanical strength, so a hay bale will actually be felt much softer than the clay by the bullet. 
My friend Cody, who's also got a YouTube channel called The Ballistician, will show you just this phenomenon, as he shoots right through what seems an excessively thick hay bale. You can find the link to his video in the description below. Oh, and by the way, going back to our murder case, you know what? The main suspects of the killing were found a revolver cylinder belonging to a Smith & Wesson Model 10 they had tried to dismantle. They later pleaded guilty for the murder and were sentenced to life in prison. They probably wouldn't subscribe to my channel, but if it wasn't for this case, I'm not sure if I would be here talking to you. On the other hand, I hope you liked this video, and if you subscribe, you won't miss many other videos like this, and at the same time you'll try to convince YouTube that you're not interested in those politically correct, pink-haired, rainbow-tailed unicorn videos. As today's riddle, have a look at this bullet. It was definitely shot, but it has no rifling on it. What is it? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.